Okay, this morning we're working our red dragon blood peacocks. After this is over, I'm going to do a quick thing on genetics, and I'll discuss that while we're, while we're looking at fish. What we're going to do is I've set aside four males. Uh, I'm going to keep three of them as breeders. The other one will get sold. So we're going to look at those. We're going to look at females and what I look for in females. And then we're going to look at some young fish to demonstrate some of the genetics. And what I'll do is later on up at the house where whiteboards work better, I'll do a Punnett square showing you some of the new genetics of this fish. Let's first pick our breeder males. Oh, by the way, my producer, director, wife complains I don't look at the camera enough. She's now doing our video editing and has become my greatest critic. So I'm going to try to look at the camera a little bit more, but I'm going to have to look down right now to pick up these fish. Okay, we've had our red dragon bloods quite a while. We lost the best ones in the winter storm. We're trying to get back to where we want to be. None of these males are as good as the males that we originally had, but I like him. He's got a lot of sky blue, but he's got some nice orange. Let's look at this one. A lot of sky blue. I don't know. I guess we keep this one. I want to cut down to three males because I found that if you have too many males, it, is, it impacts reproduction. The females in the 300 gallons don't have a lot of places to hide. I think this one. And then a these two would be this one. Okay, so this guy will go be sold. Okay, now we're going to look at four females. I've already put the females up in the breeding colony. You don't like to keep them out too long, but want to demonstrate some stuff with these four females. Note, I'm not looking at the camera, but that's because it's pointing at the... the if no words to vendor. Okay. Okay. If you're going to say something, speak up so it gets on. Okay. This is what I look for in a female. See, she's got red shoulder, red freckling, a uh, good gold body. So I'm going to keep all four of these, by the way, just because we don't have enough females right now. This is not fish that I'd keep if we had enough good ones. It doesn't have enough red in it. This one's got some nice red, and this one does too. I'm not sure. I think that's an Andre and not an OB spot. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let me go ahead and put these breeders up so they're not stressed anymore, and we'll come back. Go down here to bat E11. Okay, fishies, swim. Okay, so I'm not sure that the mic's picking me up this far away. Let's take a look at these youngsters, and then we'll talk about genetics. First of all, if you've been paying attention at all to our videos, you know that in peacocks, typically OB, the black spotted pattern like on that fish, is a dominant characteristic. And a non-OB would look like this, or I didn't keep a solid dull little fish, but a yeah, that's, that's an OB, this is an OB, that's a non-OB, that's an OB. Like I said, typically, there's a dominant characteristic. We've discovered two things about red dragon bloods. One is OB is a recessive characteristic, and the wild color pattern, the gray body color, is also recessive to the gold. And see, this, this is a fish that carries homozygous for OB, has two copies of the OB gene in this line, and has no gold, it is recessive for non-gold. Now, this fish is recessive for non-gold, but does not have OB. This fish is going to make a fairly decent red OB. He's an OB. He's non-gold. And so he's recessive for OB, he's recessive for non-gold. 
we'll put him in a vet to, um, in our BRU vet to take a look at him as he gets older in our red OB uh, dragon bloods. And that gray fish will go to our blue dragons because he will end up being blue. These will go to our uh, red OB dragon bloods. And this one, I don't know what I'll do with him. Okay, so what we'll talk about in the house later on is the genetics and, con and contrast that to the normal OB and normal gold characteristics, both of which, which are different in this fish than they are in, in other peacocks. What it would be interesting to do is to cross some of these OBs to some of the uh, peacocks that are dominant OBs just to see what would happen. Maybe some hobbyists would like to do that. We just aren't set up for doing those individual crosses like that. We might do that next year after we get Greenhouse 3 redelf and have a lot more vats to work with. Anyway, good fish teething. See you later. Okay, we promised a genetics discussion of the red dragon bloods. Let me glance at my notes, make sure I'm getting everything. We're going to talk about three characteristics today. Red, I should have used a red marker, black marker is not very good. Let me try a blue one. Blue is what the red, OB, and gold. And we'll talk about these. Two of these, OB and gold, are what I call qualitative characteristics. They're binary. They're either recessive or dominant. Red is, qua is quantitative. It's more than one gene impacting the characteristic. And so in red dragon bloods, we found that we have three characteristics to deal with these three, red, OB, and gold. Okay. A dragon blood needs to have a gold body color. And it turns out in dragon bloods, unlike other peacocks, gold is a dominant characteristic. And we'll call that, you know, when I do the Punnett squares, we'll do a capital G and we'll do a plus for the recessive gray body color. We found that in our dragon blood line that OB, unlike other peacocks, is a recessive characteristic. And so we'll use, in this case, we'll do a, kind of do a little OB and a plus for the, the non-OB when we do the Punnett squares. Red is a quantitative characteristic. Basically all cichlids can express red and they don't make the red colors. They, they get the red pigment from their diets. The amount of red and the intensity of red is determined by other genes and who knows how many. So what you find is a range. You get a, you have a fish that has a little bit of red, a fish that all the way to a fish that has a whole lot of red. It's almost solid red. And that, what you're doing when you're selecting for that, you're selecting the reddest. If you want to go red, you're selecting the reddest fish each generation until you get all the genes combined that that make that red. Okay, in our red dragon bloods, they're supposed to have a lot of genes that create red cover. We lost our best breeders in the winter storm. We're working on that. And that's simply a matter of each generation selecting the reddest fish. And it, females don't express red as, as much, but any red on a female is a good characteristic. Okay, OB. We don't want OB expressed in our red dragon bloods. And one of the big surprises we got when we got red dragon blood breeding stock in, we set them up for breeding and all of a sudden we, uh, some of the offspring were OB. It typically OB in peacock cichlids is a dominant characteristic, but in at least our dragon bloodline, it's a recessive. So you make two red OBs together and you might get, uh, excuse me, two red dragon bloods together, you might get some OBs. We select against that in the red dragon bloodline. We do have a red OB dragon bloodline where we want that. Okay, gold. Typically gold in peacocks 
is a recessive to the wild color, the, the gray. In our dragon bloods, it's not. Gold is a dominant. One of these days, I'm going to cross some of our gold peacocks to dragon bloods and see what happens. And cross our dragon bloods to some blue peacocks and see what happens. Unfortunately, I don't have enough tank space right now for that. Once we get Greenhouse 3 done, I may have enough bats to do those test crosses. Okay, so what we do in this line, we select for the reddest fish. We select for females with a little bit of red, and each generation we get redder and redder. We purge any OBs, and what happens, I'm going to do a punnet square, and this is the blind. Oh, oh, a four square square is a four cell cell square is for a single pair of alleles of a gene. And let's say I have a non OB male that is carrying OB. So he produces two types of sperm. This is our male. He produces the non OB and he produces the OB, the recessive OB sperm. Let's say we mate him to a female who is also non-OB, but is carrying the recessive for OB. And this obviously happens in our fit. You end up with the, uh, this sperm uh, fertilizing that egg. You end up with this. You end up with this. And you end up with one quarter of the eggs being fertilized by one quarter, one quarter of the eggs that are carrying OB are fertilized by uh, the one quarter of sperm carrying OB, and you end up with one OB out of every four fish. These two, you can't tell, are carrying OB. They're non-OB. You can only do that by test crossing. Here's a test cross you can do. Let's say you have a female, and you want to know whether you have a red OB, a red female, a gold body, or non-OB female, and you want to know whether she's carrying OB, you can clear these cells. You mate her to an OB male, and he's going to produce only OB sperm, and you'll get one quarter of these, one quarter of these, and if she is OB, you'll get, oops, o, OB, OB. Okay. I obviously flunked handwriting in, in uh, grade school, high school, everything. That's why I prefer keyboards. If she is carrying OB, half the offspring will be OB. If she isn't, if she's like this, there will be no OB offspring. They'll all, all be non-OB. Okay, now the same thing with gold color in this fish. If you mate two golds that are carrying non-gold, the male produces two types of sperm, the female produces two types of sperm, and you get gold, 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 non-gold. You get one quarter non-gold, and you know that these two fish are heterozygous. Now, let's say that you want to test this female. You mate her to a non-gold. And you will get gold, gold. You'll get 50% gold and 50% non-gold. And that proves that she's carrying the recessive for non-gold. So you can test your fish. We can't do that because we're not really set up to do one-on-one -on -one matings. We do group matings. And what we do is generation after generation, we select uh, for this line, we select the reddest fish, we select any non-OBs, and we select any golds. And I could go through all the genetic mathematical formula to, to show what happens. But basically what happens when I'm doing this is that the incidence of the recessive OB and the re recessive non-gold decline every generation and eventually just by chance we get rid of them okay i think that covers that uh, genetics lesson if you have any questions you can you can make a comment in the the video and i will promptly answer you good fish keeping